Don't let this happen to your classic Xbox. Fix that pesky power supply and get rid of that timekeeper cap. Coming up next. Don't forget to like and comment below and subscribe so you don't miss any great new content. Thanks so much. Hi, my name is Blaine. In part one of this Xbox restoration series, I was able to fix the DVD drive, which was stuck closed in the Xbox console. For part two here, I'm gonna be pulling the power supply and checking for any potential damage and also reflowing the solder on the AC connectors for the AC plug. Before I get started with that though, there's something I want to address first. We've got a tooth to pull from this console, and it's a capacitor that's meant to act as a battery to keep the time and date. But it can leak out its corrosive material onto the Xbox board and create all kinds of problems. Why is this capacitor such a problem? Well, here's why. A capacitor is similar to a battery in that both store electrical energy. Like a battery, a capacitor has two terminals, positive and negative. Inside the capacitor, the terminals connect to two metal plates separated by an insulator that keeps the plates from touching each other and allows them to hold opposite charges, maintaining an electric field. The problem for us as Xbox owners is they're also made up of this really acidic and nasty stuff called liquid electrolyte. As capacitors age, they have a tendency to swell. As this happens, they can discharge this electrolyte out of the top or bottom, and they will take a giant diarrhea dump on your Xbox motherboard, which pun intended will lead to game over for your Xbox. But let's make sure this doesn't happen. Let's get that nasty cap out of there. So what do you do when you need to pull a stubborn tooth? Of course, you grab a string, and you tie it, around the tooth that you need to get out. Tie the other end of the string up to the doorknob and... Well, looks like I'm gonna need another Xbox. Just kidding. If you wanna get this out, do it the proper way. You can just wiggle it out. See, the thing is, we're not replacing this because this Xbox is gonna be soft modded. If it wasn't gonna be soft modded, it'd probably be a good idea to just desolder it from underneath the board and then put an, a replacement capacitor right back in. It's not necessary in this case because the soft mod is gonna set its own time set and it's gonna be something like 2007 and there's just no reason to have this back in there. So the easiest way to get this out is to do it the proper way and just wiggle it out. Now, that having been said, if the cap is leaking, it might leak just a little bit. Kind of like if you wiggle out a tooth, it might just bleed just a little bit. So of course, what you want to do is have some alcohol ready on your finger just to put it on your gums in case your tooth bleeds. No, don't do that. I know that's the old way of doing it. But you do want to use some alcohol in case it bleeds on your board. You want to use this kind of alcohol. Put some Isopro on it and have some Q-tips ready. Just in case the electrolyte did leak out of the capacitor, have some white vinegar handy also. It can help neutralize the acidic properties of the electrolytic fluid and make the cleanup process much smoother. So all you really have to do with this is just wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and be patient and it will eventually come out. Just keep wiggling and be slow about it. Don't put lots of pressure. Just take your time and it will in fact wiggle out. And there we go, it is out. So I'm gonna take a Q-tip, dip it in some Isopro. Let's give this area a bit of a cleaning. Q-tips are cheap. Swap out the ends frequently. Keep that area clean. Also kind of clean the surrounding area just in case any of the electrolyte has leaked. 
and you may just not see it. Much better. I hope you're enjoying these Xbox videos. Please take a moment and comment below and just let me know what is your favorite Xbox game of all time. This channel is for you and I want to create content that you are interested in and you are inspired by. So please take a moment and just comment below and tell me what's your favorite Xbox game of all time. Thank you so much. Now that the ticking time bomb capacitor has been removed, let's focus on getting the power supply board out so we can check for loose and cracked solder joints, especially at the AC plug area on the board. Pull the ribbon cable out. That's going to give you access to pull the remainder of the drive part out, which then gives you access to the power supply board itself. Unplug the power supply from the motherboard right here. Lift up gently. Yeah, there we go. You'll need to remove a Torx bit here. There's another one right here, which is somewhat concealed behind the wiring, which is why you have to pull that off the motherboard first. You should then be able to lift the power supply directly up and out it comes. With the power wires leading up to the drive soldered onto the motherboard directly, you'll find it's much easier to just pull this wiring out of the looms that hold it in place, then just unplug from the back of the hard drive. And the power board is free. This is what we've been working toward, getting to the underside of the power board to inspect for bad solder joints. From the first video, you might remember my original Xbox burn up, the one I got back in the day when they were still new. And it was likely because of a bad power supply and solder joint on the board, and we know that now with the benefit of hindsight. So looking at the top of this board, then looking at the bottom again, it becomes clear this point and this point are just mounting points onto the board. It's this point and this point that supply the power, so it's these two points I'm concerned with to find out if there are any loose solder joints in there. And I'm gonna reflow them and touch them up either way. I've zoomed in as close as I can. So you can take a look at this in 4K to see the current condition, both lit up from multiple angles. and with just the existing light. Time to strengthen up these solder joints to make sure they're solid once and for all. Going to apply some flux. Remember, heat the work, not the solder.
freeze right there. Look at these two solder joints. The one on the left side is good. The one on the right side is bubbled up and lifted. What's the difference in a good solder joint and a bad solder joint? A good solder joint should be concave, almost like a volcano, and sit completely flush with the board. A bad solder joint, like the one you see on the right, would bubble up almost to be convex and lift up off the board. So I went back and fixed it. I want this thing to be right. I'm not going to risk it burning up again. It never hurts to get another set of eyes on the work you're doing. Just like I have documents I write proofread, don't be afraid to have somebody else take a look at your solder work. There is no shame in it, and it's about getting things right and getting them right for the long haul. Now we've got two volcanoes and everything should be just fine. Just use some isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips to clean up the remaining flux off the board. Well, I've got it open, might as well take a minute to do some quick cleaning. Just spraying some light cleaner on a microfiber cloth. Give it a quick wipe down before putting the power supply back in. There we go. Moving forward, there's nothing left for me to do to take out the motherboard or power supplies or any of those things. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the power supply back in because the next step will be to replace the fan on the motherboard anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and put the power supply board back in. So as you might remember, there are two T10 Torx screws that I took out. They will need to go back in. Shining a little light on the subject. The first one goes right here. And the second one, while buried pretty deep down underneath the cabling, is right there. Reattach the IDE cable to the back of the hard drive and attach the power wire to the back of the hard drive that you disconnected when you took out the power supply. Then just set that drive bay back in place. For the purposes of testing the power supply board and making sure I've done everything correctly, I'm gonna go ahead and put back in the DVD drive, but obviously all of this will have to come back out in order to get to the fan. But I wanna make sure I have good power before I do anything else. So reattaching the IDE cable to the DVD drive. Then reattach the Molex power cable. It's all hooked up and wired up. Time to power it on. No smoke, no burning smells, everything's happy. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment so we can stay connected. Looking forward to seeing you in part three of this Xbox series. See you soon.